Just two verses. Verse 23 and 24. And I'm only using this as a reference. This is not actually my text. It's just a reference. My text is in the 119th Psalm. But I thought this was very interesting. I, I just had to read. I felt it in my spirit. Listen what the prophet Jeremiah. I mean, please, he was ordained of God and anointed to speak. And he was a prophet. Now, we got a lot of people running all over the nation claiming to be prophets and prophetesses. But there's a lot of prophecies that are coming out of the pulpits of Kentucky that are not God. This is what the great prophet Jeremiah said. Oh, Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. Now listen to this. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. You don't have the power, nor the knowledge, nor the ability by yourself to direct the course of your life. That's what he was saying. Oh, Lord, correct me. I challenge everybody in the tent. Now, some of you are just fiddling diddling around back there, but I'm going to get your hide in a little while here. I want everybody here, because I can tell I look back at something going. Listen to what this prophet said. Oh, Lord, correct me. I challenge you to lift up your hands and say, Oh, Lord, correct me. Now, I believe if I could hear that one more time, I'd think you sincere. Lift your hands and say, Oh, Lord. I didn't hear you. Oh, Lord. They, and they didn't hear you going down the road. Lift your hands and say, Oh, Lord, correct me. Now, don't you feel better? Huh? Some of you actually got to take a good deep breath right there. And all that sleepiness just left. And... Oh, Lord, correct me, but with judgment. Now, listen to this. Not in thine anger. In other words, Lord, correct me, but don't do it when you're mad at me. Oh, Lord, correct me. Now, brother, I'll tell you right now that that's not a welcome scripture in most churches in Kentucky. Amen. People don't want to be corrected. And I'll come here, but now I'm not going to do everything you say. You know, I know how people are. i got three churches. That means i got three headaches every single day of my life. I've got children that's 80 years old. <laughs> Oh, bless God, some of them's older than that. <laughs> oh, Lord, correct me, but with judgment. In other words, look it over real good first, Lord. <laughs> Not in thine anger, listen to this, lest thou bring me to nothing. That is the truth. Can I get an amen? amen? Do you want God to talk to you tonight? Amen. If you do, let me hear you say yes. yes. I want to hear it one more time. Yes. Oh, you're doing fine. Turn. Psalm 
the Psalms 119. Psalms 119, begin in verse 1, I'll read down through verse 5. Listen what this great psalmist wrote. He said, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Isn't that a good statement? Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Are you going to church tonight? Well, uh, I, I tell you the truth about it, uh, I ain't looked at the TV guide yet. <laughs> There's people that stay home to watch TV. They uh, talk about, I've been wanting to see that gone with the wind. Well, you better get prepared to go with the Lord. I'm getting cold ways, but I'm feeling so good. They also do no iniquity. Hmm. They walk in His ways. That's talking about people seeking Him with the whole heart. Thou hast commanded us, listen to this, to keep thy precepts diligently. He's commanded us to. Here's my text. Oh, that my ways, please listen to this. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. The Lord spoke this to me. I wrote this down so fast. But I want to preach tonight by the help of God, if you've got some time to stay with me, on accurate directions. The Lord has stimulated my very heart and soul on this this evening. Accurate directions. The word directions means to be guided. To be managed. To be controlled. How many believe God has to have control? Amen. Amen. To instruct to do something. Directions means also knowing or telling what to do. People today a lot of times don't want to be told what to do. How to do it. How to do. They don't want to be told. How many knows that our kids don't want to be told? Come on here. <laughs> they don't want to be told where to go. Where they should or should not go. And they don't want to be told other instructions. Listen to this. I wrote this down out of my experiences. Let me just have your attention, please. The course taken by a moving body such as the church congregation, that is the directions. It's the course that you're going. It's the course that you're traveling. It is also a course along which something moves, which are a way of moving. And this course must be set, and it's got to be steady. It's got to be right or you'll wind up in trouble. The word direct means also to guide. How many of you believe that Jesus said the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth? He was saying that the Holy Ghost will direct you. He is saying that my word is your source of direction. 
you go to church and they hit a tambourine and play a guitar and shout for two hours and go home, you ain't got much direction out of that. You're about to have a calamity. Amen. Now, I love to shout, but I like to know what I'm shouting about. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The word direction or direct or guide means to show the way, to show you the way. To lead you, and as I said earlier there, to manage you. To regulate you and govern you and help you. And it's not supposed to be some religious domination over you. There's people in Kentucky that's afraid to go hear the truth because they're afraid they're going to get churched when they get back. Amen. Some of you wanted to say amen, but you're... Some of you act like you looked around and see who was looking at you. Come on, you might as well go ahead and get with me because you know those trees are out there, but they know your car is in the lot. Now listen to this closely. Listen to it. I'll, I'll try to hurry. The Holy Ghost, I wrote this out of my spirit. I want to give it to you. It's for me, but I want to give it to you. The Holy Ghost is very familiar with the way. In fact, He is the way. And he knows all the points of real interest and also the dangers along the way for you. The Holy Ghost, the Word, will warn you of dangers that will destroy you. Amen. And he will always <coughs> excuse me, point these dangers out. How many of you, if you were getting ready to have some kind of a, a calamity or a dilemma or a hardship, how many of you would like for God to prepare you and show you what you need to do to avoid that or maybe go around that? Now, brother, that's why it's so important to be where the Word can talk to you. Amen. And the Word will point out things and show you the dangers that may be lurking in your life. Because God will only let you play games so far. He said, my spirit will not always strive with you. Amen. Amen. And the Holy Ghost and the Word, inspired and spoken by the Spirit of Truth, will also help you and assist you in how to conduct yourself as He guides you into all truth. Amen. Now, you're going to lose a few friends along the way. Especially if you're looking for all truth. Everybody say all truth. I don't want to be guided into some religion. I don't want to be directed into some tradition. I don't want to be guided or led into some custom. I want to be led into all truth. Everybody shout all truth. That's all we need, preacher. All truth. Amen. Amen? Listen to this. Many come. I wrote this down for myself, and I'm going to give it to you. Many come to Jesus asking questions. They come seeking advice. They did when He walked upon this earth, and they were actually looking for direction. The Word always has the advice and the direction you need, but it will be up to you to accept it and to obey it. Amen. Amen. There are multitudes of people, and there are many here, and I know that you're here because the Lord wouldn't have spoke this to me coming down the road to preach this to you, because I've never preached it before. There are many of you that have got discouraged. And you've come to the place that you are dismayed. And I'm constantly visited by preachers who are just at the brink of giving up. I hear them say, how do you make it? How do you do it? I quite frankly have to tell them that it's Him. 
It is my ability learned in over 30 years to place my total reliance in His reliability. You understand what I just said? Because it doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter how much money we do or don't have. There are trials and hardships in life that you just cannot accommodate on your own. It is impossible for you to direct your footsteps and to know on your own what is the correct way for you. Hello. I'm constantly over the last 30 some years visited by people that continually tell me I've been in this way so long. And I'm not saying that to make fun because we've all probably said that a time or two in our lives. But we are faced <coughs> excuse me, with a dilemma in America and in Kentucky. And that dilemma is that people, multitudes of people, don't know where they are. I just hit a nerve. There, and by that I mean they are not so much lost from God, but they are lost in a sense of not knowing what they're going to do, which way they're going to go, how am I going to make it another day. And because of that, they've lost their sense of direction. And that's why drugs are so popular in our nation. It's because people are searching for something that will hide them temporarily from the realities of life. Some of you young folks here tonight, if you haven't experienced some of these things, they will be offered to you. But if you really want to have a prosperous and a full and wonderful life, you need to find a prophet. A messenger that can, in an ongoing way, give you accurate directions for your life. I have people that will travel two or three thousand miles to these meetings. Not because I'm something special. Not because of any religious thing. It is because they are hungry. They are searching for some answers. I feel the Holy Ghost coming into this place. It is real easy for you that's been saved 25, 30, 40 years to get lost. Oh, I felt the kick back on that, but I'm tougher to bank you. It's real easy to wind up so dismayed and disheartened that in your mind and in your spirit you begin to break down. Amen. And the first thing you know, you are trying to put on a smile of pretense. And you're trying to save face. But you can't. Amen. After a while it catches up with you. All because many times our spirits are starving. Our minds are famished. Because we are not exposed to the real authority of the Word. And that Word has all the road signs that can show you where you are and how far you've got to go. You don't need somebody to shake your hand and pat you on the forehead with a dab of oil. That might be all right every now and then, but ain't some of you had enough oil on you to make your hair slick as mine. You need accurate and precise 
directions. I just preached a funeral in Baltimore, Maryland. And as many times as I've been through Washington, D.C., and as many times as I've been through Baltimore, I got up there, I didn't have any road maps, and I began to realize the importance of remembering true directions. Because up there, you can get on a beltway and get... In the wrong direction, it'll take you two hours to get lined back out. Some of you spend your time looking for a church that starts at 7 and guarantees that you'll be home by 8 o'clock. And then you wonder why you don't know where you are. I've had people sit and squirm like they were sitting on a cucklebur. And if I had them, I'd have given them a cup to sit on. And they said, now, they just ain't no sense in a man preaching that long. But you never hear them complain about that two-and-a-half-hour movie they watched the night before. You say, yeah, but you get an intermission in that. Well, I'll give you an intermission let you come to the altar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the awful feelings you can have in your life is the feeling of not knowing where you are, Amen. not knowing where you're going. Now, I'm not talking about being lost from God. I'm talking about people who are mal nutrition that need spiritual nourishment mom that need precise and accurate directions because without those directions you can lose your way Amen. I have never seen so many people that's been going to church so long that are supposed to be of the truth fall in a way and just looking for any reason not to take the time to stop by the assembling of the congregation of the church. Amen. I've had every excuse in the world given to me in the halls of the malls. I've even had them in Kentucky. Tell me the reason they wasn't in church was because they didn't have any peanut butter. <laughs> and I looked very strangely at them and they made the statement to me. They said that was just as a good an excuse as anybody else had. <laughs> and consequently, we have got multiplied millions of church-going people, especially in the charismatic and Pentecostal moves, that have lost their way. They've lost heaven's road map. They don't know where they are. They have been taught and trained that just get on the bus and leave the driving to us. And they're misdirected and they're misguided and consequently they are dismayed. And when you go to talking about the Word or go to preaching just a simple thing as I'm saying tonight, they get upset and see no necessity of it. They don't see any need of it. We want to go ahead and get our little thing done so we can go home. But we're talking about whether you make it to the kingdom of God or not. We're talking about whether you're going to live forever or die forever. The Bible said, Acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways and He will direct your steps. Amen. All you got to do is acknowledge Him. If, if you get a bumper crop of corn down here or tomatoes or I think you raise peppers down here too. I saw a tractor trailer load one time and I know they raised a lot of them.
you got to thank God. Somebody might say, well, I've had that whether God had anything to do with it or not. You better not try that again next year. You've got to acknowledge Him. You need to slow down in your life long enough to give God proper, ample, prime, quality time. I'm talking to young people as well. Don't ever get too busy. Don't ever get in this fast pace going down life's road a hundred spiritual miles an hour and think, that you can stay on course on your own. You're going to look up and realize, man, I don't remember this place. I've never been here before. I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. Where in the world am I? And here you are in a situation that you don't know which way to turn. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You're all to pieces. Your nerves all to pieces. Your mind is, is boggled. And then when Satan sees that, he'll close in on you like a lion on a prey and begin to try to destroy you, to dishearten you, to intimidate you and do anything he can to you. But honey, if you are one of those that has to be somewhere where the road map is opened, thank God and the word is spoken and the directions are given, then you'll be one of those that will know where you are. You'll find out where you are. You will stay in focus and you will stay on course. And there's not a power in hell that can stop you from being where and when and what God says you are. I've got dear friends in this tent tonight that have slacked up on God. You've allowed Satan to tell you how inadequate and unnecessary you are. You need directions. Amen. Amen. You need ongoing. Continue. I feel the Holy Ghost. You need ongoing and continual directions. That's why God said not to forsake the assembling. That's why Jesus said the Holy Ghost will lead you. He will guide you. He will direct you. You ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. All over your beautiful state, we've got churches that are supposed to be charismatic and Pentecostal that are, that are building gigantic buildings. And you see, now we're making it so convenient for people that... They don't have to worry about going to an altar and getting the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Because we've got teachers that can teach you how to talk in tongues. But is it God's tongues? Is it God's language? You never get to the point that you don't need instructions and you don't need directions. When a man or woman gets to the place that he or she thinks that you don't need to hear the voice of the messenger that's got the truth, then you're headed for troubles in your life. Somebody say, praise the Lord. We need the directions. I want to know where my life is going. I want, I want to know what the dangers are. I want a description. Please listen to me. I want a description of what dangers just may be ahead. Just down the road a little ways. Because if you don't, you can lose sight of what it's all about. And you can lose your directions. Amen. Satan will do anything that he can to stop you, to hinder you from getting to the place where you get your directions and your sense 
of direction. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He's speaking to people here tonight. There are millions that have lost their way. My heart aches and breaks and I weep and I cry. I walk the floors in the night. Because I see people here and there and everywhere I go that have lost their direction. I was sitting in O'Hare Airport, Chicago the other day. What? A thousand miles from home. I was just sitting there waiting to catch a plane. And people began to come up and began to talk to me. They asked me, aren't you that preacher from West Virginia? And I said, yes, I am. I'm that old Jesus man from West Virginia. Some made statements in times past, I'm sure glad you're going to be on this plane because I know the Lord's with you. Well, I came in Sunday and never got home. I started at 4 that morning and got home almost at 11 that night. And there was such troubles, two planes broke down that I was on. Marsha looked over at me and she said, If they'll just throw us overboard, I think everybody will be all right. I thought to myself, Speak for yourself. I know that Satan does everything that he can to try to make you feel like that you've heard all of the words you need. Some of you will sit in church and somebody will take a little old text and you'll say, Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have stayed home because I heard that message last year. Well, I had cornbread last week, but guess what? If I live to get to West Virginia, I'm going to make Marsha fix me some more this week. <laughs> I took a text many, many times, and I don't believe I've ever preached that, sec that text the same way. The Spirit has a way to bring things out. Don't you allow Satan to ever get you in a state of mind to where you think you don't need to hear the instructions of the Word of God. Somebody said, praise the Lord. You need to be continually, constantly, in an ongoing way, you need to be under the anointed teaching of the only person that can give you directions. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. To give you directions concerning your life. But there's been a many a time that if I had not known what God had told me and had not listened closely to what He instructed me in, my life would have come to calamity. There's been times that I've gone to sleep behind the wheel and my family in a vehicle a thousand miles from where I had to be the next day on an interstate with the cruise control set at 70 miles an hour just trying to get where I was going to speak to another congregation the next night. And God, I've even felt God's hand on my shoulder to wake me up, to keep me from coming into calamities. And there's been times that all I had time to say was, Jesus! And I don't know how that thing got straightened up. I don't know how God did it, but God did it. I've had it happen time and time again. Honey, Satan's out here like a roaring lion. He's trying to get you to pay attention to everything in the world, but what you need to pay attention to. Get your eyes off the glitter. Get your eyes off the glimmer. Get your eyes off of these things out here in religion and get your eyes on Jesus again and let Him give you instructions and let Him give you directions in your life and show you what it takes to have a full life of blessing, of stability, of safety. I'm going to meddle a few minutes. I 
have people come all the time. They write me. They call me. They come to the talk with me concerning things. I have so many that will say, Brother West, what do you think about me doing this? Do you think it would be wrong? Must be or you wouldn't be hunting me up. You know what the Lord, I went to God, I said, Lord, what kind of answers do I give these people? Because you see, if you're doing something that you suspect is wrong, it probably is. But you're going to have to you find somebody, glory to God, till you find somebody that will tell you it's all right. And then when you find that person, you're going to look at him and say, I knew it was okay. The rest of them's just been trying to cause me trouble. Well, most of the time, I don't know whether to tell them it's right or wrong, but here's what God told me. He told me to tell people, That whatever it is that you're disturbed about, that you're wondering about, he said, you tell them to play it safe. Amen. Amen. You tell them to just be safe. Because he said they'd be better off to be safe and not do it Amen. than sorry they did it. Amen. Heaven's worth a lot, you see. Amen. And there are pleasures in life and sin for a season. But heaven is perpetual. Heaven is forever, Mom. And whatever it is that may be bothering you, and we're living in a time, some of you ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. We're living in a time when pastors and leaders of organizations and churches are leading whole congregations over the line. Just so they can do for the people what pleases the people. I preached in South Williams, Kentucky under this tent. Where God said, remove not the ancient landmark Amen. which your fathers have set up. Amen. Jesus put us a stake, spiritual stake or peg in the ground to show us how far we can go. Amen. And there is a way, there's a route, there's a road that seems right. We want it to be right many times. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Seem like we're living in a time now till church leaders are just pressing to see how far they can go. Our television programming, and they're calling it gospel, has turned in to social clubs. We've taken what they call the gospel out of the pulpit into the bedrooms of men and women's lives. Hello. People are being led over the borders. By the millions, they're being led over the line. They're seeing just how much ground they can take. How much farther can we go and get by with it? How much more can I do till my heart don't bother me anymore? How much more can I say till my my condemnation doesn't bother me? Or I'm not condemned over it anymore. And I know that if you believe you're not condemned, but if you believe you're not going over the border, 
If you believe, you'll stay where the truth is. If you believe, you'll stay where the truth can talk to you. Somebody say amen, glory to God. And we're seeing this thing pushed to the limits. And God said, the leaders are causing my people to err. And God showed me a vision the other day of multiplied millions of people that had crossed the line. And amongst those people were innocent people that belonged to Jesus. That they don't know any better because they've never heard the truth. They really don't know. But honey, I saw shepherds standing at the border said, Come out of here, my people. Come back within the borders of the truth and the gospel. Come back before it's too late. Some of you tonight... I'm your friend. I'm here to help you. But some of you have been doing things just to see how far you can go and get by. And it ain't going to do you any good to get up and walk out. Because God will get you a hundred feet left or right down that road. Because I'm not speaking by the spirit of R.A. West. I'm speaking by the spirit of truth. Some of you have been pressing... What you might call your luck. Just seeing how far you can go. and Just what you can do. Till it don't bother you no more. But you're going to wake up. And you're going to be in a place to where you won't know where you are. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus. You'll have no sense of direction. You won't know how to get back. Hear me please. I know that I've got a reputation of being Jesus' name to the core. Thank God for my reputation. I have a reputation for being a little longer in delivering my messages. Thank God for my reputation. But woe be to the nation who has silenced the voice of the prophet. Woe be to the people that have caused the prophet's hands to fall to his side. Woe be to the people that God's ordained to hold a prophet's hands up and they don't. Because millions will perish and they'll perish quickly. They've lost their directions all over this nation. They don't know where they are. They're running like a stampede many times under the guise of Pentecostalism. But you stand up to tell the truth about where they really are and they get angry and they get upset. But I'm here to tell you tonight that there is a manual. There is a road map. Oh God. Help us to find our way. Help us to find our direction. Paul's threats upon the church were against all that were in the way. They didn't care how many churches you built, how many buildings you throwed up in in that nation. Just don't teach in that name anymore. The power of the name of Jesus is what gives you your sense of direction. Somebody said, praise the Lord. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. I don't know what kind of ghost people are getting, but if you had to be taught how to talk in tongues, most likely you don't have the Holy Ghost. And I must be the one to tell you tonight that you're in trouble. You need to get back to an altar till he comes talking through you and apologize for insulting his integrity. It was a sad day for the children of Israel when that old white-headed prophet walked upon a hill and waved back at them. And this time he said, I won't be back. It was a sad day when they heard Moses' voice for the last time. It was a sad thing when this man who had been God's voice and mouthpiece to give them directions. They wandered round and around in the wilderness, but it wasn't because of Moses. It was because they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't obey what he said, and they wouldn't pay any attention to what God told them. Some of you seem like you're going around and around in a circle. 
Seem like you're not getting anywhere. Seem like you're, you're just at a dead standstill. Seem like you don't know which way to go and you don't know where you are. But you're going to have to start paying close attention to what God has told you. And look the situations in the eye. And put your reliance in God. And not in your ability to make your own way. For it's not you. It's He that is within you. And greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. I heard God say to the sluggards, if you want to learn something, go to the ants and they will teach you. They will show you. They will direct you. Amen. If you'll just watch them. Why? Because they work in cooperation. They abide in the calling they're called in. You're not supposed to go to church to just get to shout, to jump. You feel about Him. And not only that, you are supposed to come to church and sit spiritually at Jesus' feet like Mary did and say, talk to me, Word of God. Tell me what I need to know. What's just down the road for me? How will I deal with the circumstances of my life? What can I do to take care of this dilemma? What can I do, Lord, to get through this valley? What can I do to get over this mountain? I need help. I need help. I need help. What happened to that go to the extra mile? What happened to that zeal? Amen. Amen. That if you had to crawl, you'd get where the Word could talk to you. Amen. Yeah. See, yeah, but you're getting on my toes. Don't it feel good to know there's life still in them? Yeah. Oh, praise God. Some of you right here tonight really don't know which way you're going to go. You really don't know what you're going to do. But you're not to lean on your own understanding. You don't know how to map your own life out. It doesn't matter about your future plans. If God's not in them, you'll be brought to nothing. If God is not allowed to be part of your life and your family and your marriage, it'll come down to a lesser thing than it should be. He has to be first. And if you'll put Him first, He'll do things for you. Things that you could not buy with a trillion dollars. It is one of the greatest blessings in life to be able just to walk down life's road sane in your thinking. (coughs) I have them brought to my services over the years barking like dogs, chirping like birds, acting like animals. Our teenagers and our young people have lost, many of them lost their sense of direction. We've lost our value for life. Come on. Amen. We're trying to place all these things many times in government agencies. We're trying to place things in the hands of qualified psychologists and psychiatrists. But you see, they may be talented as far as book learning is concerned and teaching. But they don't know how to deal with these spirits. That woman in Texas that drowned her five children, that woman birthed those children in this earth, went down into labor and 
almost to the point of death to bring them into this world and give them life. And then turn in one short period of time in a day, drowned all five of her babies. Psychologists say, I don't know. Psychiatrists say, well, it could have been this. The truth is, America is under siege by spirits from hell because we've turned our backs on God and we've replaced the truth with denominations that want to get you in at seven and home at eight and make you a number. And they're dealing more in how many did you have. It don't matter how many you have. It, what matters is the quality of what's being said. The quality of what's being taught. The directions and the instructions. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. There's people right here under the sound of my voice tonight, young people. If you continue the course you're going, you will come to tragedy and destruction. And Satan will laugh at you while you shake and quiver 30 minutes after the needle's been took out of your arm. Drugs are out to destroy. It's not the drugs, it's, it's the spirits that's motivating people to get those things to you. You see, these things are spirits that cause that woman to kill her babies. Guns don't kill, people do. Knives don't kill, people do. It's the spirits behind all this stuff. They're misdirected and they're misguided, but God said... Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the household. Blessed is the marriage. Blessed is the individual whose God is the Lord. But God said the nation that turns its back on God, that turns a back to the Lord, He said will be turned into hell. I want to tell you that we've sown to the wind and we're reaping a whirlwind. We're a people that's got to have our own way. Tell me what I want to hear. Do something to please me. If you don't please me, I won't stay with you. But honey, let me tell you something. I didn't come to Kentucky as much as I'd like to please you. I didn't come here to please you. I came here to please God. And I came here to tell you that there's a thousand roads out here that you can get on and wind up in troubles you can't get out of. There's a thousand roads out here and all of them lead to destruction if you don't find the right path. There is a way that seems right, but it's not. There's a way that everybody wants to be right, but it's not. But there is a way. There is a path. Glory to God, it's a narrow path. And the vulture's eyes have never seen it. My God, it's the, it's the way of life and the way of truth. And Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. He said, if any man hunger, if any man thirst, he said, let him come unto me and drink. For he that believeth in me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I'm here to tell you that if you've lost your way, if you don't know where you are, if you're in dismay and your life's all to pieces, I've come with some good news. Jesus is waiting on you. He said, come back, come back, come back. It wasn't far from here. Back many years ago, that I had a big tent set up next to Liberty, Kentucky. Out in a field like this. It was there that God had me on a long fast. And I really didn't know exactly why at first. It was there that the Lord came into my little camper. Marsha had gone to West Virginia to do the magazine. And I was there in the camper. And in the night, the Lord came to me, picked me up, and you've heard me tell many times, and carried me on the wings of a great eagle. And in the end of that vision, 
and that experience, he set me down after crossing a mountain that I didn't think I could get over. I thought I would be destroyed. But he took me up so high that he took me over the highest mountain peak and carried me softly and gently down into a valley, into a new field. And that would be the final field of my life. I'm there now. The things that He's shown me, if I understand it correctly, will take me some time. It'll take me a while to get it done. But it was in that meeting that I was fasting. On a long fast. I didn't know why the Lord had me fasting. I'd go out there every night. It was so hard. You couldn't hardly get your breath. It's one of those services where nobody wanted to do anything. You couldn't get an amen hardly out of anybody. Just hard. Real hard. But I stood there night after night, week, sometimes having to hold on to the tent stakes and poles just to be able to stand up. I remember it just like it was yesterday. But there was a suicidal spirit that had been going through that county. And I didn't know. But the Lord began to show me. And after I fasted, I couldn't hardly stand up. I went out there one night. And there was probably 700 people out of that tent. And the anointing of God began to move. I'm here to tell you, it is not in the strength of flesh. I couldn't hardly stand up. It was in the power of the Spirit. Amen. That night, the anointing began to move and the Spirit of God broke that. And I cannot tell you the number, but there were absolutely dozens and dozens and dozens of people that came running to the front. They were under the attack of suicidal spirits. Spirits trying to make them take their own life. Spirits trying to convince them their life wasn't worth living anyway. And you might think, well, I don't have to worry about that, but I'm going to tell you something. These spirits can attack you just like that. And they are as real as you are. Oh, God Almighty Jesus. Amen. The Lord showed me that's why He had me fasting. I couldn't think that it was in my strength that these things would come out and these spirits would go. But I stood there trembling, weak in my flesh, and watched the power of God set every one of them free. God wants you free. God knows and has told us that there will be battles. Every one of us, no matter how strong we are in God, we will have storms. There will be things come that will hit you that you never dreamed in a lifetime that you'd see. You will experience and go through things that you just wish you could lay down and not wake up. I've been there. I've been there. I've made up my mind that I will spend the rest of my days on earth trying to find a way to get into your mind, to get into your heart, and let the Holy Ghost talk to you through my little voice and tell you that you can't make it by yourself, that drugs are not the answer. That money is not the answer. You could have enough money to fill every bank in Kentucky, but that can't buy you peace. It can't buy you tranquility in your mind. But let me tell you something. If you'll come and crawl right up to the feet of Jesus and look up into His godly eyes and say, Word of God, talk to me. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me what I've got to do to get my life straightened out. Tell me what I've got to do to get my life back on track, to get back on course. I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confused. I'm mixed up. I don't know where I'm going, or I don't know whether I'm coming. I don't know what to think about things anymore. I can't sleep of a night. My bed has become a tomb where it feels like I die a thousand deaths before daylight. I need your help. And if you'll come to Him and bow at His feet and say, talk to me, Lord, and tell me what I need to know, He'll give you directions. He'll give you instructions. And He'll lead you and guide you.
around you and help you get your life straightened back out. You'll have a better quality of life. But he said, you know what he said? The sweet, wonderful, lowly, meek, humble, darling Jesus. He said, all that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. But you know what else he said? He said, there's some of you that will not come to me. You've got problems, but you won't come to me. You want peace, but you won't come to me. You want strength and you want guidance. You want your life straightened out, but you won't come to me. He'll give you accurate direction. He'll tell you everything you need to know. And if you've been saved 50 years, He'll still be telling you what you need to know. And if you're 90 years old, He'll still be telling you what you need to do. Oh, you never get old and too old that you don't need Him to come and speak into your heart and into your spirit and tell you what you need to know. It'll make your life successful. It'll give you more of a reason to live. The prodigal son. He thought the world would be just what he needed. He thought if I could just get out there where the glamour is and the glitter is and the sparkle is. If I could just get out there. Listen to me. What he was saying in leaving was... If I could just get away from my father looking at me all the time. Always telling me what I need to do. Always trying to teach me because I'm young. If I could just get out there where I won't have to listen to him. If I could just get out yonder where I won't hear him tell me I need to do this and I need to do that. Because he didn't want to listen. And he just went to his father and he said, I want my portion of thy goods. And he went out there thinking the world was going to be his solution and remedy. I'll get out there where nobody will tell me what to do. I'll get out there where nobody will get on my turf. And I'll direct my own life. And I'll have plenty of money. And I'll have a lot. And I'll live it up. And it wasn't long till every dime he had was gone. He had many friends till the money was gone and then he had none. And most all of you know the story how he wound up working for a hog ranch. A rancher that raised hogs. And he was in the hog lot feeding the hogs of another man in a strange country. You follow the world and the world will lure you into the place of glitter and glamour. The bright lights and man, what a big eyed time. But as soon as you run out of substance, as soon as you don't have any more substance, the world will turn on you. And put you in the hog lots of despair. And starve you to death. And put you under and destroy you. God, who am I preaching to? God, who is it? Some of you are right there tonight. You've had about all of the world you can stand. You've tried alcohol. And it let you down miserably. You tried and experimented with drugs. But it sickened you and almost killed you. You tried all that you came in contact with. But it was not your friend. And now you're here. And your heart is aching. And your heart is breaking. And God sent me all the way from West Virginia to be part of this tent meeting to talk to you before it's too late. Amen. 
I just feel like there's people here that are headed on a destructive course. And I'm here and I'm your friend. The little prodigal son found out what the world was. He found out the world's not your friend. I've stood in New York and watched people on drugs sleeping on the ground. I've walked the streets of Philadelphia and New York and watched people whose house was a cardboard box. I've seen them in the middle of the winter time and it was so cold that you could hardly stand it down to zero and below, standing over manholes so that the warmth would come up around them to keep them from dying. Now I know that multitudes in America have lost their direction. They've lost their sense of direction. They don't know where they are. Satan would love to get you on cocaine or heroin. And just as soon as he can, he'll get you in a situation to where he'll close in and destroy you as soon as he can. And he'll try to convince you that your life is worthless. But I'm here to tell you that in the eyes of God, you are priceless. And you are precious. Every breath you take is precious. I believe that in the last ten years, that according to the statistics, we have killed 15 million babies by abortion. I really believe that it is a move of Satan because he's afraid and he'd like to think that maybe he could get those prophets in that slaughter. Amen. Here you are tonight, some of you that are so important to God, and yet you've not stopped long enough to look at the directions. How long has it been since you knelt with your babies beside the bed? How long has it been since you joined hands with your wife or your husband? And prayed for God to help you through something. Satan's out with a vicious attack upon people. There's people here tonight. I feel this in my spirit. I can't help how I feel. God put something in me to cause me to feel things from time to time. But there's people here tonight. Satan's convinced you that your life is not so important. That you're of very little value to anyone. But you better listen to me. He is a liar. You cannot trust one thing he tells you. He is a deceiver. He is the father of lies. And he is out to convince you that your life is not worth living. And cause you to wander down life's road. Hoping that you'll come to the place that you don't even know who you are. That you don't know where you're going. That old prodigal son came to that hog lot. And the world, the people that owned those hogs, wouldn't even let him eat with the hogs. He was so hungry that he, the Bible said, fain would have filled his belly with the husks. But they wouldn't let him even eat with the hogs. And buddy... When he looked at the situation, that's what I'm, I need your attention. When he looked at the situation, and he summed it all up, he began to realize, I need somebody to straighten my life out. I need somebody to give me direction. Whenever anybody's preaching in my meetings at the tabernacles, you never, you never see me wandering off in thoughts. 
Let me tell you, I get direction out of the mouth of a baby. I get directions and instructions and guidance out of the simplest little message. There's some of you, if it's not said just right, you won't receive it. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes you can find instructions in the mouth of a child. That prodigal son began to realize, I really don't even know where I'm at. Man, what am I doing here? Just not long ago, I had everything, but now I've got nothing but a troubled mind and a broken heart and a belly that's growling for hunger and I'm down to skin and bones and I don't have a friend here and they won't even let me eat with the hogs and... The world has let me down and all my friends are gone. And when he needed direction, and when he needed instruction, and when he needed someone, guess who he thought about? He thought about that same old person that he didn't realize that he wasn't just trying to tell him what to do, that he was telling him what was the best for him to do. The Bible said when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants in my father's house have bread enough to eat and to spare? And I perish here with hunger. I'm starving to death and nobody cares. I've lost my way. And he began to, listen to me, I'm closing. He began to talk to himself. And he said, I'm going to tell him that I'm not worthy to be ever called his son. I'm not worthy for him to call me his son. You don't even ever have to speak to him in front of the servants and call me son. That's how far it goes. Amen. He'd gone to a place that he had such a value on his life so low that he said, I'm not even worthy to be called his son. All he needs to do is make me as a hired servant. Let me sleep in the bunkhouse. And that's where Satan will take you and he'll have you with a low opinion of yourself that nobody needs you and nobody wants you. He'll try to teach you and tell you that your ministry is worthless and hopeless. That nobody needs you. Nobody cares about you. But when he got there. He found a different story. And some of you. When you get here tonight. Are going to find a different story. God is going to break the chains. Off a multitude of people's lives. There's preachers here tonight. God sent you here. You have all but given up. But you came for directions. And God has touched your heart. You've just been floating on the stream at the mercy of the current. But tonight it changes. Tonight... It changes. There's backsliders all over this tent. There's people here tonight. You've been going through the motions, going to church, but you don't know where you are. God told me here a while back that it was going to be not church as usual. But it was going to be different. 
you're sitting here tonight and you don't know what you're going to do. You're not living, you're just existing. You are starving to death for instructions. You are starving for guidance. You go to church hunting for something and there's an hour and a half of singing and hardly the mention of Jesus' name. And you're dying. And all over this tent tonight, there's some young people that your sleep has been disturbed. And there's voices talking into your heart and your mind. And Satan has almost convinced you that your life is hopeless and useless. And there's, there's people and families here that Satan has made you the target of his errors. And he's out to destroy your marriage, your life, your family, and all that's precious to you. There's an angel of the Lord walking about this tent. In fact, there's several angels walking around this outside of this tent. And there's people in this tent tonight whose hearts are beginning to pound. And some of you are going to sit there and you're going to think within your mind, I don't want to go up there. I don't want people to see me go up there. They'll think I'm this or I'm that. You better stop thinking like that. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there was a set of scales just came down before my eyes. And every time that happens, I hear the Spirit of the Lord speak. There's people here weighed in the balances and found wanting. And I'm not going to tell you that I like to feel what I'm feeling right now. Because every time I feel it, every time this heaviness comes upon me, and it's happened many times in the last 30 years, for those people who hear what's been said and will not obey what God has instructed you. It could mean troubles just days down the road. This is a night that God is sparing some people's ministry. You've been drifting for a long time. In fact, your own family don't know where you are in the Spirit. And you, a long time ago, lost your sense of direction. I'm not going to beg. And I'm not going to plead. I just heard the Holy Ghost say, You tell them... That they can consider it an honor and a privilege to come to this altar and be set free. You've got just moments. God's going to set multitudes free. Bring that heavy load. Bring that disappointment. Bring that dismay. Bring that sin. Bring that thing to Jesus. You better get out of those seats. You better get out of those seats. Some of you are carrying bitterness in your heart. Some of you are carrying envy and strife and ill feelings toward people. If you'll come tonight, you'll be set free. If you'll come tonight, you'll be delivered right here in this altar. If you'll come, your ministry will be restored. Get your guitar, Steve, and sing that song for me. God will make restitution for you. God's going to bless people's marriages. God's going to bless your business. God's going to bless your ministry. But there's some people here tonight that you came under these tent flaps tonight and you don't know where you are. I want you to bring all of this to Jesus. Come on. 
If you ever prayed, saints of God, bow your heads right there. If you ever prayed, you that's in this altar, stay right there. Somehow or another, Brother West, I've drifted. Somehow or another, I've lost my zeal. Somehow or another, I don't know where I'm at. I'm confused. I don't know what, I don't know what to do. I don't know which way to turn. They're all over this tent, Lord. They're still sitting there and they won't come. If you'll come tonight, He'll restore your joy. If you'll come tonight, He'll restore your peace. You've lost your way. But He's here to give you accurate directions. The first thing you've got to do is come. Come right now. Come right now in the name of Jesus. Come. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come right now. Come. Come right now. Oh, God, there's conviction moving all over this place. Come right now. You don't have tomorrow. You don't have that long. Come right now. Come right now. Get your family by the hand. Get your husband. Get your wife. Get your children. Come. My God, come. Once I spend my day Life's shadow Walking with my guilt Hand in hand Wishing I could run Not away from Savior who I've longed To understand Tried hard to believe just like a child would. Couldn't see the reason why he died. But in my life's most precious moment, grace opened up my eyes. So that all my were why he was crucified once and for all. Since Christ was given once and for all. Since Christ was paid through the body of his son, God's perfect. Lord just spoke to me and said there's people all over this tent who feel like your life is a prison it's like you're chained up it's like you're imprisoned it's in your mind and it's in your heart you've got 30 seconds and I'm closing this altar call but the Lord told me to tell you that he'd set you free from it all you got to do is come and bow all I have to offer is the carpet of this grass but a God that's ready right now. Your life's in a prison. It's like you're imprisoned. Come on. Come on. You got about, about probably 10, 15 more seconds. Maybe 20. Come on. Come on. Come on. I want the chains off of me. I want the ball and chain off my feet. Come on. You've got about 5 or 10 more seconds. And God's speaking to you. And your heart's pounding. God loves you. God sent me here. God cares about you. God doesn't want your life in a prison. No, he doesn't want your life in a prison. Come on. Come on, give him a chance and he'll give you life. He'll give you hope. He'll give you peace. I'd like to have 50 people full of the Holy Ghost in here in this altar. 50 people, preachers, pastors. Give me at least 50 people. Get in here and pray for these people. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you, Jesus. Once for every failure to be loving. Pray with them, pastors. Once for all the hatred of man. God's offering you your life back. He's offering you a chance. He's offering you hope. Come on, give me some more people got the Holy Ghost. Come on, moms. Come on, dads. Come on, please. We can see a revival break loose here. That 
before the weekend's done, the Brother Randolph and Sister Barbara can see thousands of people set free right here in this place. Once and for all, sin's price was given. Once and for all. God's perfect plan was done, and it was finished, once and for all, once and for all. Oh, I want everybody back out there just seats to stand up and begin to give God glory. I want every Christian that just seats to stand and pray. And thank God for his power to set everybody in these altars free. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over every person in these altars, over every person here. I plead the blood that they be set free, that the chains be broken, that by the power and the authority of the name of Jesus, their hearts and lives and minds and spirits be set free. Because he's the peace giver. If you're happy tonight because he's the one can give you logical directions, accurate and precise directions to lead you in a path of righteousness, to take you, to take you down life's road, to show you the dangers, to warn you of the things to come. Lift your hands to God and praise him. Come on. Somebody at your seats, lift your hands and give praise to God for what he's doing. I'd like to hear a thunderous rumble of praise. Come on, everybody that's got a hand lifted. Begin to lift your voice and thank God for what he's doing here. Come on. Somebody better give him praise. Somebody better give him praise. Somebody needs to give him praise. Some are finding their way. Oh, before it's too late, let's give him praise. Before we get to the place we came, let's give him praise. Blessed Jesus. Since Christ was paid to the body of his son, God's perfect plan was done. You see, it was finished. Come on, save my sons and my daughters, save my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, save my mom, my dad, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, my nephews, my neighbors, my friends. Come on, let me hear your voices. Come on, somebody better praise him. Blessed God, God. blessed you, and it was finished. Once and for all, 
that's the word of God. You can set your seats tonight, lift your hands and just tell him. Say, God, I need directions. I need directions tonight and every day of my life. I need directions. Jesus, I need you to direct my life. Lord, I don't want to lose my way. I don't want to miss the road. I don't want to come to decisive places and intersections in life and not know which way to go. God, I'm not a gay boy. This changed my life. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Let's praise our God. Let's lift our voices. Come on. Some of you, come on. Church ain't over. Come on. Come on. We're worried about what time you're going to get home, and let's praise our God for what He's done here. It's been a long time since some of us seen a crowd like this with hands extended to God like this and the anointed moving. There's an angel of God's presence in this place. There's an angel of God's presence in this place. And there's not a reason for anybody to leave here without help and direction in your life. Come on, talk to him.